So you have a um, schoolmate reserved a room, 139. For some reason, when she told me about it, I thought it was mentally, I thought it was a big room, the tutorial. And in fact, I said, why did you reserve such a big room? And she didn't respond. Probably she didn't understand what I meant. She thought that I meant this is a big room. So, what happened? I, went, I told her, go, I want to drop something in my mailbox, and then uh, I'll come and find you in the room. So I go there, I see a class up till 7 I ask, are you finishing at 7 Yes. Then I ask somebody else, I have an exam at 8. He says, oh my god, they messed up the reservation. Because that has happened to me in the past. And that's why I always ask for a paper when I do my reservations for review sessions. So I said, oh my god, they did that. And I'm, where is the girl? What is the girl that I worked with, uh, with her from my office that uh, she reserved the rooms? Maybe she feels terrible. And she disappeared somewhere. <laughs> Where is she? And I don't know what to do. So I saw some people on that room waiting for the talk. And that kind of reinforced my belief that was 117, uh, one, uh, that, that big room that I talk. So I was going to go uh, to my office. And that moment, the uh, gentleman came and says, <laughs> we're waiting for you. Can you see? What is happening here? Just a very small miscommunication. She told me 179, and in my brain, I thought it was a big auditorium. And then I said the big room, and she thought, well, she he means this. So up to the last moment, I thought it's there. She thought it was here. This is happening all the time in our lives. It will not be probably uh, not a day go away with how this happening to us. And that's why there is a lot of misunderstanding, there is a lot of uh, court cases, there is a lot of accidents. There is a lot of things that are taking place in our lives because we do not have total control. We don't really understand this until the time comes <coughs> and we have something, very big event happens to our life. One of the biggest events that can happen to our lives is when we lose our parents. Some of them, some of you, you might, you might have lost your parents at this early age. Or you lose a very beloved friend of yours. Or something uh, terrible happens, an accident, car accident, whatever, and you become lame, or your best friend becomes lame, whatever. Something big event. Really, these big events in our lives, I believe most of us, they, we come to terms that it is an illusion to believe we are in control. We are in control of nothing. It is an illusion. And when we understand that that is an illusion, we are in control of anything, then we come to a place of peace, content and we don't have that disease, which we call in our days, stress. So, I mean, this event that happened tonight, it, uh, it's, it's why it was kind of a great thing to, to make an introduction to this. Um, so the talk of tonight is stresslessness, in college and after college. Because now you know there's a big stress in college, but I'm pretty sure you can imagine that if you don't uh, put things into perspective, these four years that will be in college here, when you uh, leave college and you go to take a job, start a family, and believe me, you think you're very far from these things, you're not. Uh, then, if you, if you don't take care of these things during these years of your academic studies, it is not easy to do it uh, when you go and take a job, when you start a family. Uh, because if you don't do it now, that means you will not be in a position to really uh, try to see what's happening to you. You will just be in a current, a flow that will push you and you will not know where you're going. And if you have not taken care of these things, they may end up to great disasters. 
thousands, fights with people that you love so much and you want to know why you fight with them. All kinds of uh, things that will be happening to you, like it's happening to all so many people out there. So, it is a good idea at any day that you, uh, that you came here. I was, I was too ready to come here, even if it was only the girl that uh, called this meeting. I was saying to myself, the number of the people doesn't mean anything. Even if one person will be there, it's videotaped. And if it's successful, it's going to go online. Some people will see and will hear what we're saying here. And it really doesn't matter in what position, spiritual, mental they are. It will benefit to those that they seek for assistance, for help. The wise man said, if you knock the door, it will open to you. If you don't knock, it will not open to you. So there's a lot of people out there now, a lot of students, that they try to meet deadlines to get this GPA and so on and so forth. But unless they really take care, we, all of us, take care of this uh, thing that is happening to us, especially after the so-called engine, machine, computer, whatever, you know, 100, 200 years ago, came into our lives and created this kind of disease that is called stress. It's something that we need to, um, and if you are here, it means that you already did this, but I'm speaking for the ones that they will be perhaps seeing, not with so strong desire to hear it sometime this video or audio. We need, in order to be able to change our lives, right? We need to realize that we have something that is not good for us. It's not bad to call it a disease. If some people take drugs, if some people, uh, they are alcoholics, some, some people do all kinds of different things, whatever, prostitution, whatever, whatever it is. And the society, it calls it bad, evil, sometimes, they bring people to jail or to certain places to say we're going to heal them now. And yes, these people are sick. The conditions they grew up, unfortunately, they brought them to have these kind of things that they bring them without their own will into jail or into the hospital or who knows where. But such a thing that is we call stress, it is accepted almost like it's okay, I mean, yes, it's bad, but you know, everybody has it. Everybody's in a hurry, so well, what's the big deal about it? And that's why it's growing, it's spreading, it's destroying families, it's destroying lives, it's destroying our physical health, it's destroying our mental health, and it's destroying our spiritual health. Whatever that means to you. It seems to me I'm afraid I'm losing uh, one of my best friends, I hope not, but the, the, the news are no good. At, at the age of mine, um, he went through a lot of anger and a lot of depress depressive kind of state and a lot of... Um, but, but you see, now I talk to him on the phone and he's so depressed. But I know other people, they're dying from cancer and they are alive to the world around them. They know they have one month, two months, three months, a year, but still you can see them, they give light to wherever they are. People look at them and say, how can this be? Look, he's helping me, she's helping me, she makes me feel so good when I'm with that person, and he's uh, inspiring me, and he's dying. How can that be? How can a person dies and you feel like you don't want to be that? kind of near them because it just pulls you down like a, a negative force and then you are near another person right and and you feel like wow how can that be this person is dying and look at his how he is inspiring me and other people how can that be well this is not happening overnight it's not happening overnight you cannot become a person that is content and that is full of love and full of uh, wisdom and full of uh, freedom and 
It doesn't happen overnight. It happens because every day you take everything philosophically. You say, what is that matters in this life, really? What is that matters for me? You ask yourself, in this life, tonight, you will go and do your homework, right? Other people that are listening to this audio, they will go and do some other things, right? Are these things really more important than, um, than your life? Is it? Is it so important that you lose your peace, your sense of being well? Is this really more important than to be? Someone said, "What are you going to win, gain, if you lose, if you gain, if you have the whole world, but you lose your soul? You don't have that contentment. You don't have it. You feel like I'm always ahead. I'm always running. I'm always have to be on the phone because I feel lonely, and I got to talk to somebody all the time. And if I don't, I'm going to have to do something. Even if it's destructive, because I got to be busy. I know a lot of students feel that way." I was like that when I was a student uh, at your place. I was feeling that way. And when people feel that way, especially at a young age, it's very easy to go and do uh, things that they are very destructive. And they don't have to be just for the four years they're here. They will follow you all their life. You can make decisions today that they will be so uh, inspiring and so helpful, not just to you, but to millions of people, because you made the right decisions now that you're in college, or you did, you did the right relationships, you, did, uh, you made the right friends, okay? You spend the time with the right people. Or, because you feel lonely, and you just go whatever you find in front of you, and you just spend time with that person, or with that kind of situation. And then, things happen to you, even now, and they will follow you Believe me, all your life. Sometimes in a big way. You are not very far from things that they will affect your life until you depart from this world. My daughters, yesterday they were students here. I have two daughters, the youngest one, she just finished uh, two years ago uh, the, from the art department studio with her BA. My other daughter finished uh, science, the bachelor degree, now she's finishing her PhD next year. Who, who was expecting my youngest daughter to visit us for Christmas from Alaska in five days with a baby and married with a husband? Who? Oh, three years ago, I, it never crossed our mind. But there you are. She's a mother, a wife, and I'm a grandfather which is a responsibility now. But nobody could imagine this. And these are beautiful, there are, these are beautiful news. There are other news that, we cannot say they're beautiful, but that's the way life is, and we cannot say we don't want it. Because if we say that, then we cannot be contained. We don't have light. We cannot be wise to do things in a such a way to help ourselves and other people. What can you do? Yes, my father died. The first two days was hell for me. I can't even describe it, how I felt and how I cried. But that's a fact of life. I have to take it philosophically and see, look, now grandsons are coming up for my daughters. My parents have to go. But I feel bad because I didn't do as much as I wanted for my parents. And perhaps even with world standards, I did so good for my parents. But it's not what the people think. It's what I think. And it's what I feel. People can think that I'm the best son for my parents. And maybe they do. But how do I feel about it? Did I give everything that I wanted to give? I only know about it. And I only know how I suffer about it. And in order to stop suffering to stop, the only way is what? To do what I, would, I didn't do to my parents that I wanted to do more and I was not in that spiritual state to be able to accomplish it.